Hello this is Mark from tradingform.com and welcome to this video on how to calculate the parabolic sale and return indicator. Now the parabolic sale and return or PSAR indicator is a very useful technical indicator. It can be used for timing trade entries and exits, identifying trends and also trailing stops in profitable trades. In this video I'm going to show how it can be calculated using Microsoft Excel and we're going to start with the information that is on the spreadsheet on the screen at the moment. So what we've got here is some four hour data and we've got simply the open high low close data but for the PSR we're only going to use the high and the low columns. I'm going to enter some new columns up the top here and the first of these is the PSAR and the second of these I'm going to call it EP for extreme point. When we're in an uptrend the extreme point will be the most recent high. When we're in a downtrend the extreme point will be the most recent low. Okay, The next column is going to be these two, the EP minus the PSAR. And then we're going to have the acceleration factor. Anybody that's used this before, I'm sure all of you watching this video have used it before, will be familiar with these values, the traditional values that can be altered, but I'm going to start off with these ones. Our acceleration factor begins with our first value is 0.02, and we also use that as an increment. So we start at 0.02. If our trend increases in our favour, we'll go to 0.04 and then to 0.06, up to a maximum of 0.2. That's the maximum acceleration factor that we can use in this particular example. So the next one we're going to do is these two columns multiplied by one another. And then our final column is going to be a column just to identify visually and for use in our calculations whether or not we're in an uptrend or a downtrend. An uptrend I'm going to refer because it's quite easy to type as bull and I'm going to use conditional formatting just so it's nice and visually obvious. when we're using a bull when we're in a bull or a bear trend, a downtrend. Okay so there's always going to be an initial value for any technical indicator and for the PSAR I'm just going to use quite simply I'm going to start off using the low as our first value for the PSAR itself and the high the first value for our extreme point. You can try to identify the trend as much as you like but I find this is just as easy because the PSR is a self-adjusting technical indicator and within a few bars within a period of time it will be exactly the same no matter what initial factors or initial values you choose to use. So the extreme point minus the PSR and our acceleration factor initial value as we've already said is 0.02 I'm going to multiply these two columns together and our initial trend is a bull trend okay so the first line is fairly easy now to actually construct the indicator we're going to use a series of if and logical tests and we're going to start with our extreme point here I'm going to type in if and and we're going to look at this cell here if and this says text in inverted commas bull and we're in a, our high is greater than our extreme point in other words if we're in an uptrend and our high is higher than our most recent extreme point then we're going to take this high and it's going to become our new extreme point. Have another if and. This cell here, L5 equals 
ball. So we're going to be in an uptrend, and the most recent high is no bigger or smaller than our extreme point. So we're just going to take the existing extreme point. I'll put in another if and L5. We're going to use a bear. So we're going to say we're in a downtrend, and so of course we're going to have to look at the low. And we're going to see whether the low is lower than our extreme point. And if it is, we want to take that low. And if not, the final one, we want to check whether L5, we're in a bear trend. Oops. And this is greater than or equal to our extreme point. Then we're just going to keep the same value as previous. And if not, we want to have a blank, even though we don't expect to be using that. And then we're going to close off all of the if and functions. Okay, so we've got no value there at the moment, but once we start to put in more information in the other columns, we'll be we'll find that this one will fill. Okay, so the acceleration factor we're going to work out in a very similar way. We're going to use again series of if and functions but the very first one we need to look at the most important thing that is going to override everything is whether or not we've entered a new uptrend or downtrend and so we're going to identify this by checking whether these two are the same and if they are the same we've kept the same trend and so again we're going to look at L5 and we're going to see whether or not our acceleration factor should change dependent on whether our extreme point has changed or not. So if we're in a, bit, a uh, bull trend and our extreme point has got higher, in other words this cell is greater than this cell, then we want to take our existing acceleration factor and we want to add to it our increment here. And when I press J2 on my spreadsheet, I'm going to use F4 to make this an absolute reference cell. So once we copy the formulas down, it will retain, it will keep pointing to this cell. Okay, we get back to the if ands again. So we're going to say if and L5 again is a ball. And we look at our extreme point, and it's lower than or equal to the previous value. Then our acceleration factor is going to remain the same. Again, we go on to looking at the bear trends, the down trends. This time we're looking at whether or not our extreme point has gone lower. If so, we want to take our acceleration factor and we want to add to it our increment. We press F4 again. And finally, we want to look at L5, make sure it is in a bear, and we want to see whether this is greater than or equal to the previous extreme point in which case we'll keep our, our acceleration factor exactly the same. Okay, we can start to close off now our if and each in turn. Okay, now we're getting back to the very first one which we checked whether or not our trend was the same. So we're looking at our very first if function here. I'm going to put in a comma and if this is not the case, if we've changed our trend, we've gone from an uptrend, uptrend to a downtrend or vice versa, we always need to start with our acceleration factor as J2, as 0.02, and then we can close all of those. Okay, so there we have the formula that is almost complete for our acceleration factor because we haven't yet included our maximum acceleration factor 
and I'm going to do this by inserting another if here. I'm going to say if our acceleration factor is equal to our maximum f4 then we'll just keep it as the maximum we're not going to add to it but if not we want to do all the if ands that we did previously now I'm going to have to go right to the back I'm going to have to add in another bracket to close off that one and there we have our completed series of if logical statements for the acceleration factor okay so the next column is our just go ahead and correct this uh, extreme point minus our PSAR multiplied by our acceleration factor so we can copy this down here now we're looking at the uptrend downtrend so we're going to calculate this with a couple of if statements and they're going to look at whether or not our quite simply whether or not our PSAR is lower than our high so by this standard we're in a ball situation if PSAR is greater than our low then it's going to be a bear and if not then we want to leave it blank and we put the brackets to close this cell ok so now we're getting closer, we're almost there. PSAR we're going to calculate by taking the previous value and adding to it this thing that we've calculated in this column here. Now I can drag this one down here. Okay, so the only problem we've got left with this formula is the PSAR we need to have some way of telling it when we've moved from an uptrend to a downtrend so we're going to do this by the last lot of if and functions and we're going to say first of all if and we're in a bull so if the preceding bar the preceding period was an uptrend then we want to look at whether or not this previous plus our increments there is greater than our low. If that's the case, we're going to flip over and we're going to take the extreme point from the previous period. Then we're going to look at whether or not our L4 here is in a downtrend and whether or not in this case our high rather our G4 plus K4 is lower than our high and if that is the case again we're going to flip over and take the extreme point from the previous period if this is not the case then we're just going to enter G4 plus K4 I'm going to close off both of these press enter and there we have the formula what we can do is we can just highlight across these double click on the uh, bottom right hand corner and we're able to copy the formula down to all the cells below so there we have uh, PSAR, we can highlight this if we like and we can use this for back testing we can do this for whatever purpose we would like uh, and within our spreadsheet if you are interested in using Excel to calculate technical indicators and to back test trading strategies you may be interested in my ebook course which is available in the Amazon Kindle store called how to backtest a trading strategy using Excel. There is a link on the screen if you would like more information about this. And for more information about using Excel and the 
for trading and the financial markets, please go to www.tradingformed.com.